Hello everyone, my name is Tsepo and welcome back to Nated Engineering. Today we are looking at an exercise, which is an exercise that is based on our previous lesson that was Diesel Cycle Power Machines N6. It's, it's an exercise from a question paper that was written on December 2019. It's question number three and it reads as follows. One kilogram of air at a pressure of 110 kilopascal is compressed isotropically to a pressure of 490 kilopascal with a temperature of 198 degrees Celsius. Heat is then transferred to the air at constant pressure until the temperature is 420 degrees Celsius greater than the initial cycle temperature. The air is then expanded isotropically to the initial pressure. Finally, heat is transferred at constant pressure from the air until initial conditions are reached. Assume gamma for air as 1.4, the specific heat capacity at constant pressure for air as 1.005 kilojoules per kg Kelvin and calculate question number one. The initial temperature, the initial absolute air temperature. Question number two, the absolute air temperature after constant pressure heat aeration. Question number three, the heat received by the air in kilojoules. Question number four, the absolute air temperature after isotropic expansion. Question number five, the, the heat rejected by the air in kilojoules. Question number six, the value of CV. Question number seven, the value of R. And question number eight, the thermal efficiency of the cycle. And this is the information that we are given. Uh, first, let's look at the PV diagram. The structure of this PV diagram is unusual. It's, we have never seen it before. Let's go through it first. From the information that they, they have gave us, they say one kilogram of air at a pressure of 110 kilopascal, which is this, is compressed isotropically to a pressure of 490 kilopascal with a temperature of 198 degrees Celsius, which is from here to here. They said it is compressed isotropically. Isotropically is another word for adiabatic compression, which will be PV raised to index gamma, it's equals to constant. And then now we are here. They say heat is then transferred to the air at constant pressure. Constant pressure, heat is transferred, the temperature is increasing. PV, yes. Heat is transferred, the temperature is increasing, the volume is increasing, but the pressure is not increasing. And then from here they say Heat is transferred to the air at constant pressure until the temperature is 420 degrees Celsius greater than the initial cycle temperature. The air is then expanded. Now we are expanding. We are at point C. We are expanding the air. The air is then expanded isentropically to the initial pressure. Initial pressure, which is 110. We are expanding isotropical from 3 to 4 which is also PV raised to gamma is equals to C and then from here we are now at C they say finally heat is transferred at constant pressure we are still on this line from the air which means heat is lost until initial conditions are reached they say Constant pressure until initial conditions are met. Initial conditions, which is this one, point number one, where everything started. We come back from four to point number one. Don't cram. If they give you a scenario, read and try to derive the PV diagram that the correct PV diagram that they are looking for from that scenario. Because we are not used to this type of a structure uh based on the topics that we have already covered so 
from here this is the pv diagram that you have we are also given the mass of the air we are given gamma we are given the specific heat capacity of co at constant pressure we are given t2 we are given t3 and we are told that it is 420 higher than the initial temperature which is t1 that's all that is why we get our t3 as t1 ma t1 plus 420 420 and then we do the questions question number one they say calculate the initial absolute air temperature initial which is t1 3.1 we are looking for t1 we will use the formula t2 divided by t1 that's equals to p2 divided by p1 raised to n minus 1 divided by n and then we will uh, do this so that we are able to change these two which will be t1 divided by t2 and p1 divided by p2 raised to n minus 1 divided by n and then from here we can be able to say t1 is equals to t2 times p times this and we get our t2 we are given it's 4 seven one times p1 our p1 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 it's one one zero p2 it's 490 raised to 1.4 oh sorry it's gamma add the batik it's gamma 1.4 divided by 1 divided by it's minus 1 divided by 1.4 which will give us our t1 as 307.361 kelvin we go to question number two they say the absolute air temperature after constant pressure heat addition after constant pressure heat addition they are looking for t3 we know t3 it's equals to T1 plus 420. T1 we already have. Just calculated, which will be 3073.361 plus 420. And T3, we get that it is 727.361 Kelvin. And then from here, they say, calculate the heat received by the air 3.3 q it's equals to it's received it's equals to m cp times the change in temperature heat is received here and it is received at constant pressure that's why we are using the specific heat capacity at constant pressure and the, the, the change in temperature that we will put here, it will be T3 minus T1. That's the change in temperature that we want. And then we, we substitute the mass is 1 times the specific heat capacity at constant pressure we're given. It's 1.005 times the change in temperature will be T3 minus T2, which will be T3, 727.5. Three six one okay, ran out of space minus our T two, which is this one four seven one four seven one just ran out of space there, and we get that the heat that is received by the air is two five seven point six four two kilojoules you can say per kg because our mass is one kg let's erase this hopefully you won't need it 
and we go to question number four they say calculate the absolute air temperature after isotropic expansion from here to here they are looking for t4 t4 divided by t3 this is the formula that we are going to use p4 divided by p3 raised to gamma minus 1 divided by gamma we are looking for t3, t4 therefore we will make it the subject of the formula we will have t4 is equals to t3 and then our t3 <laughs> just erase this let me write them here t3 is equals to Seven to seven point three six one Kelvin, and then T one, it's equals to three o seven point three six one Kelvin. Our T three, we have seven to seven point three six one. P four, our P four, it's one one zero. Our P three, it's four ninety. Raised to 1.4 minus 1 divided by 1.4 which will give us the final temperature as 474.655 kelvin and then we go to the next question which is question number five they say the heat rejected by the air in kilojoules which is the heat that was lost during the transition from stage number four to stage number one. Q rejected. It's equals to M times the specific heat capacity at constant pressure still. A, the heat is still lost at constant pressure with Cp times the change in temperature. Oops, delta T. Now the, the change in temperature will be from here to here, which is T4 minus T1. Hmm? It will be T1 minus T4. Yeah, T1 minus T4. Let's just put it here. T1 minus T4. And our mass is 1. Specific heat capacity 1.005. And temperature, change in temperature. T1 is 307. 307 point 307.361 minus T4. We just calculated is 474. I will erase this. 0.655 yeah 55 five kelvins which will give us our heat rejected as negative to show that it is heat rejected 168.13 kilojoules per kg because we are using one kg and we go to the next question which is question number six they say calculate the value of cv number six three point six cv we can get cv using this formula we know gamma is given by cp divided by cv we have gamma we have cp therefore we can get cv as cp 1.005 gamma 1.4 which will give us the value of cv as 0 0.718 kilojoules per kg kelvin and then we go to the next question where they say we must calculate for the gas constant which is r we know r it's given by cp divide my negative cv cp we have it's 1.005 negative cv 0 
which will give us our gas constant as 0 0.27 0 0.287 287 is yes. kilojoules per kg kelvin and then from there we do our last question which is question number eight they say calculate the thermal efficiency of the cycle the thermal efficiency it's given by Q received minus Q rejected divided by Q received times 100. And then we substitute Q received. It's this one. It's 257.5. 642 minus Q rejected 168.13 divided by Q received which is this one 257.642 times 100 which will give us our thermal efficiency as 33.743 percent the thermal efficiency we are looking at out of the heat that was transferred to the gas how much of it was actually kept in the gas after the stroke or how much of it will be used if we are dealing with a cylinder the heat energy that remains at the gas is the heat energy that will be used to push down the piston we want that uh, we want the, uh, that uh, amount of heat how much of it was actually used to drive the piston down and that is basically the end of our lesson i will see you on the next lesson